What's up, puppers? Jerome here with another TBC video. Today, we're talking about why enchanting is the absolute best profession in phase three of the Burning Crusade. Before we get started, please click that like button, hit the subscription button, and don't forget to tick that notification bell as well, or I won't be able to keep making videos like this one. All right, so the first reason why you need enchanting in TBC and it's the absolute best profession choice right now is simple. If you're actually playing the game, let's say you're doing your dungeons, your heroics, you're doing your raids, you're PVPing, you're not going to really be making any gold. In fact, you're going to be going down in gold every single week because of consumable. So the solution to combat that is to actually make gold when you're playing the game. And what that means is disenchanting all the items you get. So let's say you're in a normal dungeon or heroic, you're in like a level 70 group, you're doing shattered halls or you're doing your, your black morass daily and boom, you get a blue item. You can disenchant that, get a large prismatic shard. Now all of a sudden you've made maybe 30 gold off of that. And that can be done over and over and over again. Every single heroic you do, you can probably get a couple of blues, one to two. You can get purple items as well, get even more gold from that. And you're just gonna suddenly be making so much gold from your dungeons where you weren't making any before. And when you add in the fact that you can now get primal nethers with your, your badges, it means all of a sudden every single dungeon, you're easily making 40 or 50 gold from heroics. That's a lot of gold and it's just sort of passive income. You can be helping your guild, you can be making all Tarras and Lich King. Whatever you're doing, if you're in a dungeon, all of a sudden you're making pure profit. This is why you've seen a huge proliferation of people looking for, for heroics and normal dungeons and they're looking to reserve all the unneeded gear. It's because they're disenchanting it and they're actually making tons of profit doing it. And that could be you. You could be making all that profit yourself. And even if you're not gonna be reserving all the items yourself, you'll still get a couple of greens, a couple of blues every single dungeon. And that's so much profit over time. And one of the things that's really important to note is that enchanting materials are actually gonna hold value or even go up over time. Because as less and less people do these heroics and dungeons, it's actually going to cause the prices to go up. And people, when they finish a Black Temple, they finish a Hydra, and eventually they finish that Sunwell Plateau, they're not gonna wanna sit around with their epic new items and not enchant them. You have to enchant items. Otherwise, you're not really, you know, you're not getting that true bis and your guild will probably flame you and you won't look dedicated. So you have to enchant stuff that week, meaning people aren't too discerning with prices. It's honestly a great choice for the future as well because disenchanting stuff will continue to always be profitable. Even in the Sunwell, let's say you're you're doing say a Mechanar three months from now, you'll still be getting large prismatic shards and those will still have just as much value in the future. Everyone will need them and they'll actually have more value. So it's, it's really a great choice. If you're struggling with gold, then I would say disenchanting is gonna get you so much extra gold. All right, so the next huge reason why you need to be doing enchanting as quickly as possible is the best in slot ring enchants and all the serious arena players already know this. The serious raiders know this, but if you're a healer, the 20 healing power ring enchant is insane. That gets you two 20 healing power enchants so you get a total of 40 healing power. That's absolutely massive. If you think about, say, uh, uh, you know, going from a, a tier one, maybe something like a Light's Justice, and all of a sudden you've moved on to uh, Lady Vash's weapon, for example, you're getting that massive healing power increase. Well, imagine if you could just get that again with 40 more healing power. That is insane, massive for arenas. It does actually make a difference. Meanwhile, if you say a Warlock, for example, you wanna have extra spell power, the 12 spell power enchant is so good, you can get a total of 24 which is massive. The other ring enchants, the four stats and the two damage are not as relevant. So if you say a warrior, for example, maybe not your cup of tea, but a prop paladin, for example, that extra spell power is huge. These ring enchants are really, really, really true best in slot for practically all casters. Just an amazing, amazing way to be more powerful in your raids and arenas. And you can get that true bis feeling. Otherwise, you're always missing a little bit of stats. If you don't get these enchants, it will be noticeable in your arena games, in your raids. It's just one other min-maxing thing you need to do. Keep in mind that unlike before, you are not able to drop enchanting after enchanting your rings. So you're pretty much locked in. That makes it an even more enticing option. You don't really have a choice here. If you wanna have your true best stats, you're gonna need to go enchanting. Another reason why you should be going enchanting as soon as possible is the passive income. 
from doing a chance for other people and obviously this market's gonna be covered by a ton of people but if you want some extra free gold getting say the the, the 15 spirit enchant the resilience enchant the uh, mongoose enchant if you can get it from a karazhan all of a sudden you're making this extra passive income yes you do have to do a little bit of work but if you're really 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 struggling to make gold out in the open world this is a great way to make that extra gold and of course you're you know you can go out and get these these recipes and eventually acquire more and more and more similar to say jewel crafting for example when you get a recipe you're going to have to make that gold back over time and that investment may or may not be worth it to you but as well you can help your guild and that's that's really nice they'll say people are getting this upgrades in their raid you can help them be more useful as a raider ultimately enchanting for other people may not end up being your cup of tea the gold drastically goes down in between phases but when a new phase comes out there is actually quite a bit of profit to be had so when za comes out all of a sudden everybody's gonna need all their gear re-enchanted when sunwell comes out boom all of a sudden everyone needs their gear re-enchanted so it's something to keep in mind and don't forget pvp gear one thing to know about pvp gear is it is way easier to get now with the new changes so it's, it's way way faster the mark changes and you can get the gladiator season one gear from honor easily and so all sorts of people that may not have been interested in pvp before will need to get their enchants and they can come to you to get some of their basic enchants say their boar speed for example and you can help them out and make extra gold so the market actually should be pretty solid right now for enchants and it's a great way to make extra gold. One of my personal favorite reasons to be enchanting in DBC is that when you're out in the open world farming, all of a sudden, all those useless green and blue items you were getting are very, very valuable. So one of the things I like to do is the Legion Hold Farm. A lot of people go out and they farm for primals. All those random green and blue items you get vendor for a very low amount of gold. And you can actually make a lot more gold disenchanting items and then selling that on the auction house. And this is kind of overlooked by a lot of farmers. Seemingly not everybody out in the open world that likes to farm is doing enchanting and disenchanting. And there's so much gold being left on the table. I mean, frankly, if, if you're like me, you've probably vendored 10,000 gold worth of items and you've only made say three or 4,000 gold from that or less in your, your TBC experience. So that's so much gold lost. You could have been making way, way, way more. And it's just something important to note is if you do want to go out and farm a lot for Wrath of the Lich King, or you're a Paladin booster doing, you know, Strat boost, or you're a Mage booster, whatever it is, if there is something being left on the table, let's say you're just vendoring your green and blue items, you're losing so, so freaking much gold. It is absolutely ridiculous. You need to remedy that immediately, and that's why you need to go enchanting. One thing I love to do when I have a character with enchanting is I go on the Trade Skill Master on the auction house, and I do a disenchant search, and you can find all sorts of items that have been priced lower than what you would theoretically get if you disenchanted the item and then sold those on the auction house. So a great way to do this is you can check for items with a high level that would give you, for example, a large prismatic shard, and then boom, you're just making some free profit there. There are hundreds and hundreds of greens and blues on the auction house at any given time. And there is so much profit to be made here. If you have a large bankroll to begin with, you can make a lot of gold. Keep in mind, some items will not sell very well. So one one typical noob uh, newbie mistake, like, you know, I've made this myself, is is you do a lot of these, these flips. You buy a bunch of items, you disenchant them. Then the things that you go to disenchant never sell in the auction house for seemingly days and days. And then you're desperate for gold, so you sell them for lower than you should have. One thing to keep in mind is to look at the enchanting leveling guides and see which sort of items are super, super high use. Because as I've said, everyone should be going enchanting. So if everyone's going enchanting, everyone's gonna be using the same exact guides and leveling the exact same way. So which items are used are going to be very, very important. Dusts are a great example of something everybody uses when they're enchanting and they're leveling up. Something like arcane dust, for example, very, 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 very easy to sell because you're gonna need hundreds and hundreds of them. Planar essences are another good example. Anything where you're going to be using it in the leveling process and you pretty much can't avoid doing that, that's something that will be able to sell easily. If you're doing a disenchanting shuffle on the auction house, keep in mind things like a large prismatic shard, for example, something you know you need in an enchanting recipe that's very popular. Those things will sell so easily that it's basically an auto buy for me if I see an item that will generate in a large prismatic shard. 
So you gotta use your brain a little bit, otherwise you'll fall for that typical new player mistake of you get a bunch of, of cheap items, you disenchant them, and then you put them on the auction house and nobody ever seems to buy them, and you panic and you sell for less than you should have. One quick note about auction house disenchanting, is that you can also make a lot of gold from actually making your own items, tailoring items, for example. This is going to require a little bit of finesse, and there are some good sheets out there. I'll link a sheet in the description below with some example flips you can do. So basically, you could buy a bunch of cloth, for example. You could make a belt and then disenchant that belt and make profit from that. Uh, this is something that will fluctuate wildly with prices, and it will depend on how many how many of these like materials, for example, are coming into the game. So let's how much nether reef cloth, for example, how much rune cloth. And if there isn't a lot coming in and the prices are high, you may not make any profit. There are all sorts of tailoring and disenchanting shuffles you can do. And a shuffle means you're basically taking materials, you're turning them into something, then you're shuffling that either to a vendor or you're disenchanting and then auctioning. And there's a lot of gold to be made here. It is labor intensive. Not something I would do if I, I really don't have a lot of time, but there is gold to be made. And it's hundreds of gold, maybe even thousands of gold. So it's something to keep in mind. So you learned a bunch of things about why you need to be enchanting in TBC, but I haven't given you the best tip of all, which is a really, really, really easy way to level your enchanting. So this is gonna be a great tip when you need to do maybe a bunch of plus health to bracers, for example. You can do it with one button and never have to worry. I'm gonna put a macro on the screen and I'll put it in the description below. It's simple. All you gotta do is put the item you wanna enchant on the bottom right of your double vertical bar. You have to add the extra action bars and the double one on the right side with the two vertical bars. The very bottom right slot is where you're gonna be doing your enchanting and then you just put your item there. And then all you gotta do is open up the enchanting menu, click the enchant you want, and now you can just start pressing your macro, which you've put on your bar. I like to put it in the one slot. This is a really great way to do it. It's the best possible macro setup that I found on the forums. This one is good because if you do one with an inventory spot, which is a common way to do a macro like this, you put your enchanting item in an inventory spot, let's say the slot one of your, your bags. The problem with that is if you press the macro too fast, Sometimes you'll end up equipping the item by mistake. That's a disaster because then all of a sudden you don't have uh, your item to enchant anymore. So you'd have to have, say, a duplicate. So this is just the best way that I found to do it. It'll make your enchanting so much easier. You can do it with one hand. You won't even have to really look at the screen anymore while you're enchanting. And you'll find that the levels fly by. Personally, I wouldn't be able to do enchanting without it. So we've covered a bunch of reasons why you need to be enchanting in TBC, but honestly, my favorite reason why enchanting is so great in TBC is that it rewards you for actually playing the game. It rewards you for doing dungeons. It rewards you for raiding. Heck, you can even disenchant PvP gear now. You can disenchant uh, whatever you want. You can get badge gear or disenchant it. There's so much gold to be made in this game from enchanting. And it's just an extra source of income. It's an extra source of rewarding you for playing the game. And combined with the fact that you can turn badges into nethers now. You can turn badges into primal nethers. It means you can make so much gold from just playing the game and doing dungeons and doing heroics and even PvPing and doing raids and it's just fantastic for the game. It's something that honestly maybe should have been emphasized earlier in the game. I think I should have been talking about this a lot earlier. It's such a great way to play the game when you can always profit from every aspect of what you're doing. Thanks so much for watching. I wanna hear in the comments below, are you running enchanting in the Burning Crusade? What are your current professions? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and remember to have a great day.